SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball Super Superhero Pan was released on the 25th of May as a premium Bandai web exclusive and retails for 6,000 yen or 50 US dollars. I bought my copy straight from Premium Bandai Japan, but if you pre ordered through Premium Bandai US, Pan should ship out next month in June. So let's jump right into it, and what I love most about this figure are the head sculpts and the very expressive face options Pan comes with. I've said this a million times in all my reviews before, but the head sculpt and I guess more importantly, what kind of facial expressions the figure comes with is really what separates a good figure from a great figure, or at least in my books. In Pan's case, while I do enjoy all the options we get with the face plates, as well as an extra wind swept interchangeable headpiece, it's the size of the head that really throws the figure out of proportion for me. As a standalone figure, she is as much fun as Kid Goku, Kid Krillin, and I would say to some extent an Anya of the Figure Arts Dragon Ball line. She has an ample selection of accessories and some pretty good articulation that'll let you pull off some pretty dynamic poses for her size. But when posed up against her father, Gohan and Piccolo, the head unfortunately does look a little on the big side, especially if you want to have Gohan picking Pan up and pressing her against his cheek like he did in the movie. Again, on her own, she looks totally fine, and I can totally understand why Tamashi upscaled Pan, unanimous decision or not. I'm sure they wanted to give Pan a figure that is worthy or substantially significant enough for her character. Still, I think personally I would have liked to have a slightly scaled down version, or at least the head being downsized just a bit. But other than that, and a few overly tight joints which is easily fixable, Pan is exactly what I expected her to be. A fun, surprisingly poseable little figure of a character that we've never had before in this line, and I guess that in itself should be celebrated. Looking at the details, this is Pan in her training outfit when she is sparring with Piccolo at the beginning of the movie. Pan's shirt is made from a softer, pliable plastic with a cut on her back that allows for more torso articulation. Yes, Pan does have an ab crunch. The design on her t-shirt is printed on nice and clean, with the only other paint apps being the dark grey on her t-shirt and skin tone on her exposed ankles and fingers. For heads, we have four facial expressions ripped straight from the movie, as well as an extra wind-swept headpiece for all your action and flying posing needs. The printing for the face plates is crispy clean donuts, and again, I couldn't be happier with the selection. As for QC issues, I haven't had any major problems with Pan, except the left shoulder and right leg being a little on the tight side. Nothing a little hobby oil won't fix, but if you are suffering from the same problems, I definitely recommend oiling those joints up, especially at this size. You don't want those joints to break. Other than that, everything else is pretty much spot on in terms of quality. All right, so let's take a look at Pan's articulation and uh, we're gonna jump right into the head. And most of the head here is assisted by that really good neck joint you see there. Her head is on a dumbbell joint. So you will get some movement from that. But again, most of it is from that uh, really good neck joint. Head goes down. Head goes really far up. Great for those parallel flight poses. Side to side. Tilt is fantastic, and of course you have rotation there as well. So for her uh, butterfly joints, Pan does have butterfly joints even for this size. You can see right there, they move in and out very well, and uh, Pan can bring her arms into her chest quite far actually. You can actually push that really far into the torso there. And it hides it pretty well there at the back as well. So I'm very impressed with that. The joints are a little bit squeaky and I did say that, uh, you know, it's a good idea to actually oil up those joints. My left shoulder there was really tight, but it's freed up a little bit now. It's a little bit still squeaky. It's still a little bit squeaky, but um, I did put some oil in there just earlier and uh, it's freed it up a lot better than it was before. So we do get pants, arms moving uh, past 90 degrees, which is great. And of course you do get that rotation there. Just, just move her head out of the way at the shoulder as well. So her elbows here, she does have like a ball joint going into the sleeve there. Uh, so it is a free ball joint. So you do get, um, I guess, 
free range of movement there at her elbows. It's not, you know, your traditional hinge bicep swivel there, but you do still get, um, you know, movement there at the upper bicep. You also get, it's a single jointed elbow, but you also get a kind of cut there at the joint, so you get rotation as well. Of course, you also get your traditional hinges and, well, it's not a hinge because uh, her arms or her hands uh, extend out to a ball joint, which uh, give you the attachment to the actual hand. These little, I guess, cuffs here are separate pieces to the wrist, but uh, yeah, hands are attached via ball joints. So yeah, I guess you do get like a hinge and a swivel there. But uh, looking at her torso, as I mentioned earlier, we do get a cut here at the back to allow you, or to allow Pan to get, or to crunch forward. And she crunches forward pretty well. She crunches back nicely as well. Again, really good for those kind of like floating in-flight poses. I think for a really tiny figure, um, she gets a lot of really good articulation. And when you compare it to something like, you know, your Kid Gohan uh, or, you know, the Saiyan Armored um, Krillin. Yeah, this is this works really well. Side splits aren't a problem. Look at that. I think you can go a full 180. And her crotch piece here is a similar soft, malleable plastic like her shirt. Um, so I'm glad that they went with that. Forward and back. Again, because of that softer material, you will get her to do the front and back splits very nicely. We have a single jointed knee. Swivels there at the foot. You can get it to go all the way around. She has a toe hinge. A little bit of down, not too much up. And uh, we do get a bit of ankle pivot there. If I can just get that to focus, there we go. So yeah, ankle pivot, it's decent, but all in all, I mean, overall, this is a very well articulated figure. Again, for the size, you're going to get some really fun poses out of this uh, little pan figure. So enjoy. For hands, Pan comes packaged with two fists, two splayed out open hands, a pair of, I guess, key blast or fighting pose hands, and a set of hands for holding these cute little water bottles, which plug straight in, ready to hand over to Piccolo after an arduous sparring session. I guess I wish this release would have also come with an extra hand for Piccolo so he can actually hold the water uh, bottle as well. But what we do get as an extra bonus is another piece to the ultimate Gohan builder figure. And this one is definitely a very welcome addition. I've always advocated for more powered down happy expressions in this line. And this head sculpt is the second only smiling expression we have ever gotten for Gohan in the line. The other coming with the original 1.0 Cell Saga Gohan that came out like ages ago. Another figure that we desperately need an update of. But back to the head sculpt, and I'm really liking this piece. The hair sculpt is the same as the powered down version we got with Gamma 2. The strands aren't poking straight up like your ultimate Gohan hair, but it's more relaxed and kind of just lays more naturally. And the wink expression is certainly a nice change up to what we usually get in the line. The faceplate is interchangeable with the other headpieces, so you can get some different looks for Gohan. And because his head sculpt doesn't have the holes on the side of his head, uh, you can definitely use this headpiece with the other faceplates without the glasses as well. Options, options, and more options, always a good thing. 
So Pan isn't for everyone, and I guess that's why she's a premium Bandai exclusive, but if you enjoyed the movie like I did, if these sub-characters are just as important to you as the main cast of characters, then I think you're going to enjoy adding this release to your ever-growing collection. And it's basically world building in figure form, which is what I really enjoy about this line. Nothing is out of the question, no character is too insignificant to make the roster, and I think that's what I enjoy most about collecting the Figure Arts Dragon Ball line. There's something for everyone, and if there isn't now, there probably will be. It's just a matter of time. If you just wanted the Builder Figure Gohan headpiece, then yes, I can understand how that can be a little bit disappointing and frustrating, but I guess I'd rather get it this way than I guess not at all. Again, probably not for everyone, but overall, Pan is a fun little entry into the superhero line and a line that I hope to get a Cell Max from, I don't know, maybe in the near future one day. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll be back with a non-draggable review next. Yes, it's my first look at a Naruto figure. Finally, I know I've been avoiding this line like the plague just because I know I'll end up enjoying all the figures as well. So please come back for that review because I'm super excited to talk about Naruto, the number one most unpredictable ninja with all of you. Until then, take good care of yourselves out there. Be good to your moms. And as always, Yoroshiku!